Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to Spirit Speakeasy. I'm Joy Giovanni, joyful medium. I'm a working psychic medium, energy healer, and spiritual gifts mentor. This podcast is like a seat at the table in a secret club, but with mediums, mystics, and the spiritual luminaries of our time. So come behind the velvet ropes with me and see inside my world as I chat insider style with profoundly gifted souls. We go deep, share juicy stories, laugh a lot, and it wouldn't be a speakeasy without great insider secrets and tips. You might even learn that you have some gifts of your own. So step inside the spirit speakeasy. Hey, beautiful soul, welcome back or welcome in for another episode of Spirit Speakeasy. On today's episode, I am going to talk to you, the way I titled it was one, two, skip a few, Joy's Thoughts and Theories on Reincarnation. So we're going to talk a lot about reincarnation today, but first I want to tell you why I was inspired to do this episode and a few other catch up things with me. So for those of you that listen to the audio version, hopefully you won't notice much difference. But for those that like to watch the video version, either on my site or on the YouTube, uh, my background is different today. I'm actually in my office. For those of you that watch the weekly readings that I put out, whether you're getting them in your email or um, on any of the places, (laughs) I put them everywhere. Uh, you will already notice this background as my new office. Uh, and it's pretty cozy in here. My day was scheduled a little strange today. I had to do some uh, blood work, some labs this morning for some testing I'm having done. And I was like, well, let me just try to bring my microphone and my headphones and all the cords and things. I mean, my laptop comes to the office with me anyway just to see if it would work to record in here. It's a little bit cozy in here. And my office, uh, the waiting room has windows and other offices uh, in this little group of offices have windows, but mine doesn't. So I'm hoping that the sound will be good for all of you. But I know some of you get uh, a little shaken up when either I look different or something's different uh, with the lighting or the background or the sound. So that is what is happening here. I I have an actual uh, Starbucks today. If Starbucks wants to sponsor me, God, please do send me free coffee or anything at all. Um, but I'm not sponsored, of course. So I'm going to take a sip because I had labs. Um, they were at like a, 11 a.m. today and they were fasting labs. So I wasn't allowed to have even black coffee. I know that's kind of a controversial. Some people think you can have it. Some think you can't. But according to the doctor that sent me and Professor Google, uh, it said no. So I'm going to take a sip because I'm still trying to get caffeinated for my day a little bit here. So if, when you hear me sipping, that's what I'm sipping on. This is kind of my personal traditional go-to Starbucks drink. It is a Cafe Americano, which is essentially four shots of espresso and water with some stevia. I do like a little splash of some kind of milk on top. This is almond milk. That tends to usually be the one that works for me. So what was my inspiration for this episode? This one, two, skip a few, my theory on reincarnation. Well... I'm also preparing to do another Ask a Medium Anything episode, and several people asked about reincarnation. So since it's such a big topic, I wanted to give it its own episode. But the the reason I got inspired to do it was, did you guys notice that I missed releasing an episode last Monday? Uh, I missed releasing an episode last Monday. And the other thing that I've missed is for June and July, I have taken a break from the free monthly community events, which are going to be back this week. So hopefully you're on my email list. And if you're not, make sure you go to the website, joyfulmedium.com and get on the email list. It's right on the homepage. You get the free mini course, sign magnet, which will teach you how to get signs. And then you'll also get invitations to all the things I do. And I do a lot of uh, free things. So, but I needed a little break. I needed to take a step back. I have heard and read lots of emails uh, about people not loving that. But sometimes, you know, even though it's hard to do, sometimes we have to take little breaks from things and have to honor either how we're feeling or what our energy needs. And 
Uh, as you guys know, right now the podcast is not monetized. So I feel like I do a lot of work that doesn't generate income. And sometimes I need to focus on the work that does generate income for little bits of time. So because I one, two, skipped a few, you guys, last week and just couldn't get it together to get uh, a full episode out to you guys, it kind of inspired me because I was thinking, well, actually, I have also been interviewing on other people's podcasts, and I was on another podcast recently, which when it comes out, you guys will, um, I'm at Joyful Medium across all the platforms. So if you follow me, you will see the posts and all, all the things about that. But the host asked me about reincarnation, my opinion um, as a medium, did I believe in it? Uh, their, their podcast fo focuses on a lot of paranormal stuff, topics of all kinds. So just wanted to get my thoughts. And honestly, the way I often answer this question, part of it is that I believe that when we are, I do believe in reincarnation. So let me just throw that out there. Um, I believe we get this opportunity to do a one, two, skip a few. And what that means, for those of you that don't know, uh, is essentially, I think that if we incarnate in this lifetime, for example, and then say we cross over and you know, it's time to, for us to make the choice to reincarnate again, we can say, you know what, I'm going to take a break this go round. I'm going to support uh, from this side. I'm going to do this other adventure, choose your own adventure, for example. Um, so I think that we get the choice to do a one, two, skip a few. So that was the inspiration for this podcast. Uh, thank you guys for all the love about my dental stuff too. That's still going on. There was a mistake at the lab. The One of the crowns didn't fit right. So I'm, <laughs> I'm however many weeks in on this uh, and I still am waiting uh, for the final finalization of one. Um, so that is what is going on. Plus it's been summer. I don't know if you have been busy, but I have been so much busier than I expected to be this summer. And does anyone else feel like time is like flying by at hyper speed? When I was looking at the schedule this morning and I was like, oh my gosh, I have that free community healing next week. I need to like make sure I send out the the reminder about that. I can't believe it's it's like almost here already. And I feel like it was just it was just Monday and now it's Friday and what the heck is happening? So let me know if you feel like time is also on hyper speed. Now we did talk about it in the episode eight themes of the eight year because we're in an eight year and it has been showing up in the weekly readings this this theme or this idea of time kind of slowing down and feeling like things aren't moving and then all of a sudden picking up at like a really fast pace so i think that's just more of what's happening this year i realize sometimes i sit really close to the mic so i'm gonna lean myself back a little bit here okay i'm gonna take another sip i wish i had a straw and I use reusable straws. So before you guys read me for filth or send me messages about that, uh, I do, whenever possible, use my own reusable straws. So let's talk about reincarnation. What is it? Do I believe in it? Uh, do you always reincarnate as a human? What else might you reincarnate as? Do we have to come back? Do we come back together? Or are we kind of all on our own every time? So those are some of the things we're going to touch into today. Now, as I mentioned, um, well, first, let me say this. I don't have all the answers. I wish that I was uh, evolved enough as a version of my higher self here on earth that I, that I knew these answers for sure. But the truth is, we all will find out one day. I don't think anyone can say that they know with 100% certainty like they remember, but I think that we have intuition and I think we have inspiration and I think that there are things that happen or books that I've read in the past, especially earlier on in my journey. Um, there's a book by Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, it is called The Little Soul in the Sun. I often read it in the programs that I teach because it's such a beautiful, maybe we'll do, I wonder if I'd be allowed to read that on the podcast. If anyone knows about copyright stuff, am I allowed to read a children's book on the podcast if I'm saying who the author is and not showing the pictures? I would love to share it with you guys, but if not, you can buy it. It is technically a children's book, so it's worded in a gentle way, but essentially it's articulating this idea that we do come back, but we, um, I think the way it, it explains it is 
is basically this idea that we only understand the truth of the fullness of who we are through contrast. Like if you're saying, I want to be the light, like I, that's what it says in the book. This little, this little soul says, I want to be the light. And it's like, well, how could you know light or distinction of what is light if you don't have any darkness? So then they have to go to this place where there's darkness so they can be the light, right? And these other souls show up to help us on our journey that we do know and are friends with on the other side. But when we're here, it's almost like we're cloaking our identity so we don't recognize each other and don't recognize or remember the roles that we've requested other souls to cross our path and play. So highly recommend that Neil Donald Walsh book. It, it actually is based on an adult book, which I think is Conversations with God. I might be incorrect. I'll link everything in the show notes uh, for you guys so you can find those as well. And I'll look into the copyright thing because I would love to share the book with you. It's pretty amazing. So that is part of how I developed my own theories, beliefs, ideas on reincarnation. And you know, sometimes you just read something and it just resonates so deeply with you as true, even if we can't prove it necessarily, right? Even if there's no science that has validated it for us in our human understanding, sometimes you read something particularly of a spiritual nature that it just either sends a chill through you or just deeply resonates with your inner knowing. And that's kind of how a lot of this has been for me. Um, I have gone on little bits of investigation of down rabbit holes like all of us when we're trying to learn something new. And somewhere clicking in the in the room behind me. Uh, and, you know, I do really believe in reincarnation. I think I think as souls, we're excited to come here. I, I think we have, you know, anyone who's in their 40s or 50s has been hearing it our whole lives from Oprah that we're on this earth school. So, and I think Eckhart Tolle talks about it like that too. I do believe that this planet is a school for us as souls that we're coming here to experience contrast. We're coming here to experience the challenging spectrum of human emotions as part of our human experience because the way I understand it right now, and again, I'm always learning and growing myself. So if you ask me, hopefully I'll still be around in 20, 30 years. And if you ask me then, I might have more information or a different answer or um, new thoughts. But right now, I understand it and have understood it for many years as this this place we come because the other side doesn't have the challenged spectrum of emotions. It's the loving spectrum of emotions, the depth of understanding, that true, deep, pure wisdom on the other side, right? So even if there are complicated situations that happen on this side, once we don't have the, um, you know, in psychology, it's the ego, right? And I don't mean ego as in like a conceited personality type. I mean it as like our, our identity, our ego, our humanness. We don't have that once we cross back over. Yes, we have our memories and our personality, but we understand the tough emotions, the tough situations differently from that um, higher perspective, I guess is what I want to say. And I don't mean high as an elevation. I mean uh, more evolved, more true, right? Without so much muddiness and without the cloudiness of the tough emotions over here. But if we came into this incarnation with all of that wisdom, what would be the point, right? Um, I do think that there have been ascended masters and teachers that have come in with much more of that wisdom. You know, those are the people that we consider um, sometimes leaders of faith, sometimes uh, just really wise teachers. Uh, so I think there, there are people across faiths that have come in with maybe trailing a little bit more of that wisdom and have a different perspective that they're trying to teach the world. Um, but by and large, most of us are regular humans having our human experience. So I do think we choose to come in to this existence. I think we're excited about it. The way I've been shown, included in my own meditation and sometimes hearing from other mentors, sometimes hearing from other teachers out in the world, um, I believe that we, well, we all have a team of guides and inspirers. And I actually am going to do another episode about that, talking about who's on your team. But for now, just give me, just give me this. We all have this team of guides and inspirers that work with us or with any soul when they're going to incarnate into this lifetime. I believe as a soul, we kind of quote unquote, sit down, obviously 
it's probably not the way we do in our human body, but sit down with our team of guides and inspirers as a soul. And we develop this blueprint, this plan for our life. Now, I don't believe that plan necessarily specifies you must do this profession. You must, you know, achieve this goal. I don't think it's that kind of a plan. I think it's a plan that has to do with the qualities that we will come in with. You know, some kids, I'm a mom, as you guys know, and I, I whether you're a, a, a parent or whether you just have kids in your family or in your life in any way, or whether you've ever been a kid, which I think most of us have been, you know that there are some kids that are just talented in certain areas and other kids that are talented in other areas. And I think that we choose all of those qualities and characteristics uh, as part of our blueprint when we're coming in as a soul. I think it's part of us choosing the family that we're born into. And some of the obstacles, experiences, things, you know, not judging them as good or bad, but some of the things that will cross our path in this lifetime, I think we as an individual soul set those up with the support and help and guidance of our team of guides and inspirers. And this might be a little controversial, but I'm going to say all the things today. I'm not going to hold back on you guys. It's just my opinion. So I'm going to keep saying it's just my opinion. It's okay if you don't share the same theory as me. It maybe just roll it around and, and think about it and think about how it resonates with you or doesn't. Um, but I, I, yeah, it's just, it's, these are just my thoughts for my experience, for my uh, own study and my own journey so far. I think that we not only choose our parents, but I think our children choose us. So I feel like it's, it's all part of this orchestration that we're coming in with. Now, I think we're given lots of opportunities when we're here to make free will choices. But for example, um, I'm 5'2". I used to... <laughs> I used to be 5'3", but I'm 5'2 now. Um, I didn't choose that height in, in my conscious mind, but obviously it's part of my DNA, part of my makeup, part of my genetics. And so there's things like that that are kind of steadfast, right? Our, our height, sometimes the, the hair color that we have, although we can change that when we're here, our eye color, you know, uh, the, the geographic area of the world that we're born into. I think all of that is part of the plan and part of the plan for what our soul wants to experience, grow through, um, have presented to us along our human timeline, the course of our life. So whether we consciously know all those elements or whether we sit with our guides and team of inspirers and, and, um, focus on, I don't love the word lesson. I've come to not like that word over the years, but I'm just going to use it f just to, to simplify. Um, you know, there's certain lessons our soul wants to learn. There's certain things our soul wants to experience. So I think we set up lots of the elements in the dynamic, and then maybe our guides put some pieces together that we didn't know about. Maybe we don't know the country and our guides think, you know what, to learn this or to experience this, this soul really needs to be born into this area or needs to be moved from this area to this area at some point in their life. So I think that we're given some of the framework and I think certainly the core qualities of who we are as a soul um, comes with us when we come into this incarnation. But I think we choose it and I think we're excited about it. I think there are plenty of souls uh, that want to incarnate. So I don't think there's like a, I don't think it's like a draft, <laughs> like a military draft where we're getting like sent here. I think we're actively choosing it. Now, I did say at the top that I think we can one, two, skip a few. So if you can choose to come, then I believe you can also choose to not come. Uh, and this is a little bit of a tough, I'm going to put a little asterisk here because this is a little bit of a tough thing about what I'm going to say. Um, I do believe sometimes that we can choose to come in. Uh, you know, not a lot of people know this, but I have a, I had a brother that died when he was just a couple days old. He, he was carried all the way to term and maybe I'll talk about it more one day, but due to a medical situation that is now completely preventable and doesn't 
at least in our country, take the lives of babies anymore. Um, it was just something that they didn't know a lot about at the time. And he died as a result of a, of something totally preventable now. So I actually have come to believe that that was part of his agreement was just to come in to have this experience and then to exit. Um, cause it's a very strange, the very strange little condition or, or reason that he that he passed away. Um, like I said, it's it's totally preventable and, and fairly easily preventable at this point. So I believe that sometimes that's our contract or our agreement. And in this work, you sometimes hear people use the word contracts, agreements. That's what they're talking about, the things that we have agreed to on the other side. But I believe he would have known that I was his sister and that our parents were our parents. And I think he would have chosen that to participate in that way intentionally. So I think it works lots of ways. Now, suppose that we decided, okay, I'm not going to incarnate this time. I'm going to stay back. My, you know, some of the other people I know are going to go and I'm going to stay back this time. I think there are then some options for us. I believe that there are lots of jobs to have on the other side. I don't think they just necessarily, I mean, I'm sure they could just sit there in a pool of love and enjoy their time, but I also think they do other things. I, <laughs> this is where it's going to get weird. So buckle up. Um, I think it is rather arrogant to believe that we are the only life forms on any planet in all of all the galaxies and universes. Is that the right way? Is that the plural universes? Universe I? Um, I don't think we're the only ones. Now, what that means beyond that, as you guys know, I'm not super into the alien stuff, just personally, no reason why it just doesn't call to me yet. Uh, maybe it will one day, but I think there are other you know, if this is the Earth school, I think there are other schools for us to visit. Are they planets within our solar system? Not necessarily. They could be planets in other galaxies. They could be a different dimension of galaxy than this one that we're aware of here. I won't go too deep into this part because it's, I know it's like a big idea, but the point is, I think there are other schools for us to go learn in if we choose. And I also think that sometimes we can serve on someone else's team of guides and inspirers. So, so if we get to be having a hand in choosing our team of guides and inspirers, maybe you're my very best friend and you've been in lifetimes with me before and you know me so well. And I say, hey, you're not going to go this time. Will you Will you be my life guide? Will you sit on my team and be my life guide? Or will you be my mediumship guide? <laughs> will you help me communicate with souls over here and communicate with their loved ones? And will you will you play that you know place on my team? Will you sit at that seat on my on my uh, boardroom table? And I think we have the option to do that. So there's a chance that perhaps you, perhaps me, any of us might have been guides to serve someone else in the past, or maybe we're going to be a guide in the future for someone else. Um, I don't think that I get asked this a lot. Uh, and I get, again, when we do the, who's on your team, who's on your spirit team, we'll go more into this point. But I think if someone has crossed over in this lifetime, like say you have a loved one that is on the other side, they spent some time here with you and now they're over there. I don't think they become your spirit guide. I think it's a different thing. But I do believe that they can be an inspirer on your team. They can give you inspiration. They can give you support. They love you depending on like your work that you're doing in the world versus like what they did. Maybe they're a great person to give you some advice and to inspire you. So I think they can still help us in that way. But I don't think that they, if, if you want to get super technical, I, I don't think that they would be a spirit guide for you in this lifetime because you have Many of them, when you come in, they're either actively working with you already or they're kind of on the sideline waiting to get called up. You know, maybe, for example, maybe you're going to become a teacher and you don't need this one specific guide until you step into that role and then they would uh, come in and work more actively with you. But it doesn't mean you haven't already chosen them before. Now, that being said, I think we can ch choose or request additional guides for different things at any time. But again, <laughs> watch for that episode. Um, so I think we can reincarnate or incarnate into different schools, different worlds, different dimensions, if you believe in that. I, I have come to believe in that as well. Um, I think it's just a word, right? We always say the spirit world is a world within our world. Well, that really basically means it's in a different dimension than this physical 3D 
what we can experience with our five senses dimension. It's a different dimension that exists right here, right now. So that's all I mean by that. Uh, it's just a different word. And I know it's a weird word and it has a lot of attached to it for some people. But so if we can come in you know, or sit as a spirit guide, if we can go incarnate in other experiences, other schools, can we come back as anything else here on earth? I believe we can. <laughs> uh, I believe that we can also, for example, incarnate as an animal. Like say you've been a person before and you decide, you know what, I want to try to be a dog or I want to try to be a horse. I believe that we can incarnate in those type of forms if we want. I don't have proof of this. I just, for some reason, feel like I know it's true. Um, I've had lots of animals in my life, and I think a lot of us have. I've, I've, I don't like the word own necessarily, but I guess I've, I've had lots in our own family uh, since I was a kid over the years. I've had friends with lots of animals, so I've gotten to be around a lot of animals. Some feel more human than others, I'll just say. Some have, and I've communicated as a medium with a lot of animals on the other side. And the personalities, the details, the essence of their soul, mm, even though I'm sometimes aware that they that they uh, incarnated as like a horse or a dog, they, they have also this very, I guess, person-like personality. So it's one of the reasons that I think we could incarnate as an animal. But I mean, I think we could also be a plant if we wanted to. If you were like, I just really, really want to experience being a rose bush. It doesn't mean you're going to have the level of consciousness that you have now. You're not going to, I mean, if you don't have a human brain to cognate in that way, obviously it's a little different, but could your essence kind of grow up into the flower of a rose as just an experience? I don't see why not. I mean, like I said, while I can't prove some of this stuff, I really also can't make an argument or can't disprove it. Like, why couldn't that be true? Why shouldn't that be true? If this is a school that we can learn lots of things, it doesn't necessarily mean it all has to be interpersonal or it all has to be this human experience. Why couldn't we be wanting to have other experiences? I think we can. Okay, I'm going to take another sip here. So that's my thought about that. Now, another thing I want to touch on is this idea of sometimes you might hear it said as like soul families, soul tribes, soul groups. It's the idea that even on the other side, that there are collections of us groups and that almost think of it like a traveling theater troupe. If you've ever done a play or seen a play uh, or like here in San Diego, we have like the off Broadway, the Broadway musicals and they tour, right? A touring group or even like a band, I guess. And everyone that's on your cast and crew and everyone associated with it, they travel together, right? Um, and they put on their play and, you know, today I'm the sister in the play and you're the uncle or aunt in the play and and maybe you're going to be a background player you know a different time in the play so there is one school of belief that we have these soul families and it doesn't necessarily only mean your human biological family but it's a it's a it's a cast essentially is basically what it is and some people believe that we stay more or less in this group. There might be some other kind of like background players or, you know, the, the people that work at your grocery store, the people you, the people that you meet when you're walking down the street each day. Is that Mr. Rogers? Um, so there's other people in our world, but the people that you are most closely associated with, the theory goes, would be part of this quote unquote soul family for you. And it's thought that we incarnate over and over with the same cast, even though we might play different roles for each other. So like I was saying, maybe I'm the mom this time and my daughter's the daughter, but maybe in a, in a different lifetime, we came together and she was the mom and I was the son. Um, because I do believe that we, I mean, why wouldn't we? We want to play different quote unquote roles. We want to experience different relationships. And we get to experience a lot of relationships just in our own incarnation, meaning 
I'm Joy, and you guys know me however you each know me, but I'm also a friend and a mom and a, a well, a sister <laughs> and a daughter, and a, um, I've been a boss before. I've been uh, a worker before. I've been a lot of things, right? A cousin. So we have these different dynamics and relationships, but I might want to experience a different relationship. I might want to be a dad in my next life. And I can't experience that in this lifetime, in this incarnation as me. So I might want to come back. But in the soul group theory, you would come back with the same kind of band or cast of characters and you would just play different roles. Um, and you would come back over and over and most of you would come back most of the times. I mean, I think that theory can hold up, but I also... I do believe we sometimes reincarnate with some of the same people. Um, if you've ever had the feeling like you've met someone in life, whether they're related to you or just a friend, and you feel this depth of connection with them, like, I can't believe we just met. We Like, people even say it. I'm, we must have known each other in a past life. I think there's some weight to that. I think that can be true. Um, so I think sometimes we reincarnate with some of the same people, but I also believe that other times we can incarnate with different people or be, you know, maybe my soul family is incarnated, I don't know, in New Zealand and I'm incarnated here and maybe our paths will cross due to free will choice and, and options and maybe they won't. Um, that's the other thing with that blueprint. I think there's lots of options and things built in. I often use this uh, example with clients and I've discovered not everybody knows what this is. So let me know if you know what this is or not. But when I was a kid, I loved to read. I read a lot. And one of the most fun books for me was the Choose Your Own Ending book. And in the Choose Your Own Ending books, uh, everything's already written in the book. You're getting it as like a finished book when you're reading it. And you start off into this journey, whatever it is, like you're in the forest and you're, you know, whatever you're doing. And then there'll come a point, maybe several pages in, where it will say, and you come to a clearing in the forest, and to your left, there's a bridge, and to your right, there's a doorway in a tree. Do you want to cross the bridge, or do you want to go into the tree? And it'll say, if you want to cross the bridge, go to page 79. If you want to go through the doorway in the tree, go to page 104. Uh, and throughout the book, there are over and over again are these types of choices. Now, sometimes we'll choose the bridge and then later on the tree will become an option again. So you don't necessarily lose the option. It, it often wraps back around and you can reread the book and try the other ways again. So in a very oversimplified way, I kind of think that's how it works for us where even though certain things are built in, like I was saying, maybe your eye color, your height, your hair color, the country you're born in, I think other things are in there as like an option. Okay, if you choose to go to this school, then, you know, you get to meet these people and learn this. And if you choose to take a year abroad and go to a different country, then you're going to meet this people and do this. It doesn't mean you might never get the opportunity to meet some of those people again. It's just in a different way. So that's a little bit of a tangent, but I hope you guys are staying with me. So I do think that there are some built-in options for us. And some of that might be meeting other people that are either in our soul family, if you like that term, or people that we just know on the other side, other souls from our collective. But I do think we're a collective family over there. Um, so yeah, I think that there's, you know, sometimes I kind of think of it like, like high school, for example, where if you go to the high school, you're all, you know, say that's the other side, for example, and and you're all in the same school, you all go there, you might know some people in a more deep way than others. And this year, I'm going to play on the field hockey team. And next year, I'm going to be a cheerleader. So I'm going to be in these different groups with different people, but we all still know each other as souls. Um, so I think there's lots of different options for us. Now, as far as do we come back together? That soul family idea is one theory. Uh, there are other theories that were kind of independent journeyers and we make agreements and contracts with people like we were talking about at different times at different junctures in our life where I might have had a contract, for example, with my ex-husband that he was going to show up at a certain point in my life. Now, it would be my free will choice 
if I want to talk to him at all or not, um, is what I want to say, but it would be my free will choice to engage with him or not, or to what degree. And for example, which this did happen to me on more than one occasion, um, I might meet someone and at that time I might have minimal involvement with them. And then later I might meet them again. And then at that point, a relationship might develop. So I think that's happened for a lot of us where it's like we're being given another opportunity to choose. Sometimes, I mean, I don't know how much is by chance, but maybe sometimes it's more intrinsic to your plan and maybe other times it's just lining up that way. Or maybe there's something you're supposed to offer them, an opportunity, but I don't think we have to know any of that of what it is. I think we set it all up ahead of time so that we now just get to live our lives and try our best, right? Um, but I do believe there are certain people that we're intended to meet on our path. Uh, I think we all have those people in our life that are not related to us, but that are some of the most important people or monumental people that we've known. Uh, and that's where I'm back to something I often say, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Um, we might meet them in a very short way and they might make so much difference in our existence and set us on a whole nother path or really bring something in us to the surface. And we might meet someone for only a season, meaning like a, a short period of our life or a, a season of our life, let's just say. And there's richness there, or even if there's challenge there, there's things that they're presenting us to learn. And then there's some people we get to know over a lifetime and practice these lessons with and tools with and, and have relationships with of different kinds. <laughs> so do we come back together? I think that's a loaded question. I think sometimes, like I said, I think we choose our parents. I think we choose, I think our children choose us as parents. Um, I think we agree to the sibling group that we have in this life. I think we agree to a lot of those elements as part of that overall blueprint, if you will, but I think that there are other people who maybe we don't necessarily reincarnate in the same family as them, but we definitely know them on the other side and they're definitely intended to cross our path in positive ways or in challenging ways. Because just like I was saying, where someone you could meet for a reason or a season that is incredibly um, meaningful in your life. I mean, my sixth grade teacher is one of these people. She just saw me in a way that I hadn't been seen up to that point. And I still love her and I still think of her. I've even gone back to visit her a couple of times in my life. Um, but there are on the other side of that coin that are people, there are people that show up at different points in our life to agitate us, to be a catalyst for us to realize something else. Have you ever had a really horrible boss? Now I'm not saying you necessarily chose that boss before you got here, but you chose that job. You said yes, whether it was because you wanted to or because you just needed the job. And this boss shows up that is really terrible in some way. Maybe they're really strict or maybe they put a lot of pressure on you. And maybe that pressure and discomfort causes you to say, you know what? This is ridiculous. I don't want to do this. I'm going to go get my degree or I'm going to go really start my own business as a carpenter, because that's what I need to be doing. So sometimes people show up and I do believe that sometimes we have an agreement or a contract with their soul. I know it's a weird thing to say, but where it's like, okay, when I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going <laughs> to, my son played football and I like football. Um, so sometimes there are these alternate routes, right? Where it's like, if you see me, you know, going off to the side here, uh, your guides need to need to somehow get you to come in and intervene and be a really uncomfortable person in my life. So it shakes me up and I have the option to choose to do this course instead. You know what I mean? I hope this makes sense the way I'm explaining it. I know these are kind of big theories and big topics. Um, so I think in that way, we have kind of options out on people. And I think sometimes our guides will throw a Hail Mary. I think sometimes there's something that it's like, all right, well, we need to really shake this person up. And, and you know, I've had it happen to me in lots of ways. I've had it happen with big health disasters. I've had it happen with 
big life breakdowns where the bottom is falling out, but it's almost like I had overstayed my time in that situation, in that relationship, at that job. And sometimes the only way to get us out of our comfort zone as humans is to really have things shaken up for us. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think that's all part of it. Uh, and the other thing is where I have kind of a real challenge with this over the entire time that I've been learning about this, which is more than 20 years at this point, sometimes in the new age or the, the spiritual work, people tip a little bit over into victim blaming for me. So I'm not saying that every time someone chose their own illness or chose their own bad situation, or sometimes things just happen. Sometimes things just happen as a part of this world. We know that there are toxins in this world. We know that accidents happen. Sometimes things just happen. I do also believe that sometimes we have, I don't like the word chosen here, but sometimes we know that certain things are a possibility for us when we come in. And sometimes we might know in our soul that something like this might happen and we agree to it. But I want to be very, very careful here about not tipping over into that, what I would consider victim blaming, because I do also think sometimes things just happen. Sometimes someone was exposed to asbestos and ended up getting sick because of it. Like sometimes things just happen. Um, so please know that I'm not trying to blame anyone for their illness or trauma or tragedy or anything like that. Sometimes things just happen. So that is a lot of my theory on reincarnation, uh, on the way it works, the way it's set up for us, the way we are involved in setting it up. Um, I don't believe we have to come back. I think we are really excited to choose to come back. Oh, there's one other little thing I wanted to touch into that there are some different theories about. Now, I, uh, I'm brought to my mind is the beautiful soul we knew here as Mavis Patilla. Um, I got to know her when she was in her, I think, 70s and 80s a little bit. Uh, she's gone back home to spirit at this point. But I remember her giving a talk once. Um, I might have been in a workshop that I was in. I'm not entirely sure where I heard her say this, to be quite honest. Um, but in my mind, I can see and hear her saying it. And it's this feeling of like, well, how terrible would it be if, you know, I cross over, you know, one day at, at whenever my time is, and I'm so excited to see my parent over there. And I've been without them, you know, maybe I'm someone whose parent crossed a spirit when I was just very young, and I hadn't seen them in a long time. And I was, you know, I was really looking forward to seeing them. And then I cross back over to the spirit world. And they tell me, Oh, she just left, you just missed her. She just reincarnated. She's that kid now. Um, and I actually think Andy Bing might say, a version of this, but I don't want to put words in his mouth. So just know this is not my original theory is I think where I'm going with this and please credit to everyone who credit is due. But how horrible would it be if there's that person over there and you're just waiting your whole life to get to see them again and then you cross over and they're like, oh, they just left. So I do believe that we kind of wait for each other and I do believe those that we need to reconnect with, need to be with, the craziest thing just went in front of the camera and I don't know what it is and there's no fuzz in this room. Um, so a really strange orb. If you guys are listening, you might want to check out the video version at about the 44 minute mark <laughs> and look for the orb. Um, maybe I can put it in a clip. Uh, anyway, so how terrible would it be if we wanted to see that one person and then we get over there and they're, they've already gone. So I do believe we wait for each other. I do believe we have the opportunity to be reunited, to um, have healing between our souls, to really have, I don't know if it's conversation, but to really have exchange and understanding and peace with the souls that we spent time with in this lifetime. This kind of brings me to a little bit of another theory because often people will say like, you know what, my, I just ha I, I have a son and he's just four years old and he's just like my dad who passed away. And is it my dad reincarnated into my son? 
I personally, and I can't say that this is 100% of the time or across the board, but I, I would say as a medium, usually no. Usually your dad is still there on the other side and this little guy that you've brought into the world is his own independent soul. Perhaps your dad is, I mean, definitely your dad is watching over you guys and inspiring him and, and probably spending a lot of time with him. But for me, I mean, I'm not saying it can never happen. I'm just saying I don't think it's the I don't think it's the more common thing. Um, I do think that in this example, Dad would be still waiting on the other side for the rest of the family to rejoin. Now, this brings me to a very interesting theory that I just want to mention. I don't want to go too much into it. I heard uh, a teacher, Tony Stockwell, talk about this when I was in one of his classes, and. It's this, the way he says it is he wonders or thinks or um, theorizes if, what if the soul is more like a diamond? And you know how a cut diamond has all these different facets, right? And if you were to shine it in the sunlight, all of these different streams of light would be refracted. These different rainbows, right, would go streaming across. And he was essentially saying, I, I'm just paraphrasing, I'm not, is not a direct quote because you guys know I'm not good at that. But essentially, what if our soul is more like that and we could be still our one soul and we could split off is not the right way to say it, but we could stream into more than one consciousness at a time. So what if uh, here on Earth right now I'm joy, but what if on some other planet or some other school I'm somebody else right now and I have kind of dual citizenship or dual incarnation? I don't know if that's possible or not. I've really spent several years thinking about the theory. There have been even some shows. Um, oh, you guys will have to help me. There was one show on Netflix that was something about eight. Um, and it was this one, it was this group of eight people who all were part of the same kind of master soul. So there have been other play or other, you know, expressions of this sort of similar theory. So is that possible? Maybe. I don't know. It sounds wonderful. And I do believe that um, the universe, divine creation, whatever word you like in place of God, or if you like the word God, I, I think if, if, if God or the idea of all that is, is limitless, it could be potential. It could be a possibility. Maybe we are incarnated at the same time simultaneously in more than one dimension. I don't know that it happens at the same time in the earth school and in this dimension with more, we can be more than one person at a time. I don't know about that, but could it be possible that we could be incarnated or having an experience through our soul? Because, you know, as we talk about here a lot, we have our soul self, our higher self, but all of our soul self cannot fit in this human container. We we have also our human personality and, and kind of that veil or the things that we're going through and, and experiencing here that's separate, a little bit separated from um, that divine wisdom that we have access to. So maybe we are not limited to incarnating into one being at a time. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that theory. I don't have a I don't have a hundred percent answer on that theory. It fascinates me, but also sometimes when I kind of go too deep into the rabbit hole or when the idea is too big, I, I think about it for limited amounts of time and then I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna let that one go for a while and put it to the side. I'm also, as you guys hopefully know, very careful when I'm going down internet rabbit holes to be vetting sources and making sure. Uh, who I'm getting my information from, but I think the theories are fun to think about. So that is what I want to share with you guys about reincarnation, my thoughts and theories on reincarnation. Let me know if that resonates with you. Let me know if you have found truth in some of these ideas as well. I'm so curious what you guys think about like the diamond theory and, and, um, I don't know. I just really, I think some of these things are really big themes to tackle. I think when we ultimately, you know, hopefully many, many, many moons from now cross over to the other side, we'll all have these answers, I think. I think we get to know, you know, like the whole playbook's open to us and we get to know most of the things. So 
let me know what you think. Uh, I'm grateful that you have been here with me today. I'm so thankful for your graciousness with my one, two, skip a few last week that I missed. Uh, hopefully we will be on track. I've got several episodes already edited and ready and coming at you. So we should be good for this next little spell here. As always, if there are other topics you want me to talk about, feel free to email them to me, uh, joy at joyfulmedium.com. Some topics I will talk about and some I won't, even though I've been in this work, um, I guess on the professional side for about 13, 14 years and in my own personal curiosity and reading and everything for many, many years before that. Um, some things have called to me over the years and some things haven't. So I don't know. There's some things that I just don't know a lot about and don't find <laughs> particularly interesting for me personally. So if there's something that that's been requested that I'm not talking about, it's probably just because I don't have any, I don't have much to say about it, or maybe I don't have an opinion or I haven't yet found an expert to ask about it. Because some of the things, if I don't know, I try to find an expert to come in and talk to us about. So we have lots of experts lined up to talk to us about lots of amazing spiritual topics. So let me know your thoughts on reincarnation and how all of it works and, and all the questions that we chatted about today. I hope everything is going well in your world. And again, I'm super grateful for the time that we spend together. If you are not already subscribed to the podcast, I would love it if you could click the subscribe button wherever you are watching this. Uh, it helps me. It helps me know that I'm doing the thing. So, and it helps you not miss any episodes, except for the ones that I accidentally don't put out on time, which is almost never. <laughs> <laughs> Big hugs. Lots of love. Bye for now from inside Spirit Speakeasy.